information in, and based on that information, we form our own opinions or decisions. Would you like to forget everything we've discussed so far, start a new topic, and we just deal with that one topic where we don't go on to other topics? Yeah, I, I, yeah, that, that would be great. Okay, be great. Um, it's not going to be much of a Bible thing. It, it, it's more yeah. a case of um, Watchtower, the sort of um, practice and the teaching of the Watchtower. Okay. So yeah. could we discuss chapter 13 on page 55? It's only one paragraph, paragraph two. And as you say, we'll just deal with this. We'll ignore everything else that's been said so far. And we'll put this one to bed. Okay. Obviously, y you have the chance to get to get back to me on, on, on this. Yeah. Do you want to read um, paragraph two mm -hmm. on page 55? Right. How does false religion misrepresent God by its actions? Is that the one? Yep. Yep. Okay. It says, false religion does not treat people as Jehovah does. And the Bible says that false religion's sins have massed together clear up to heaven. For centuries, religions have meddled in politics, supported wars, and caused or approved the death of countless numbers of people. Some religious leaders enjoy a lavish lifestyle and demand money from their followers to pay for it. These actions prove that they do not even know God, let alone have the right to represent him. Um, thank you for reading that. Yeah. Now, what interested me here was the book seems to be saying that religions that have any involvement in politics, that meddle in politics, or which support yeah. the wars of this world, or whose religious leaders enjoy a lavish lifestyle paid for by their followers, these religions are basically fake and they do not represent Jehovah God. Have I got that right? That's correct, yeah. Um, but the Watchtower has meddled in politics and wars for numerous years. Um, I, I can give you certain um, examples. Um, one would be the Watchtower for the 15th of May 1918, page 6257 of the Green Reprints where in 1918, America had entered the First World War the year before. Um, Rutherford was about to be arrested and go on trial with the other six or seven brothers for sedition. So he printed in the Watchtower an article, one of several actually, promoting the purchase of the Liberty Bond in America. So he was telling American readers of the Watchtower to buy Liberty Bonds to support the American military in the First World War. I can read the article to you if you want. It is rather long, long-winded. Yeah, no, don't worry. Don't worry. Um, so that would be an example of the Zion's, it was actually called Zion's Watchtower at the time, not the Watchtower. It was called Zion's yeah. Watchtower and Herald of Christ's Presence because they believed that Christ's Presence was from the year 1874. Yeah, 1914. Actually. No, no, 1874. They didn't adopt the 1914 date for Christ's second presence till 1930. Um, well, that's not true, but still. Oh. Yes, it is. Um, in the book Prophecy on page 65, we read the second presence of Christ is from 1874. Let me just go there. Okay. Um, Rutherford. The book is called Prophecy. It was published in 1929. I have a copy of the book Prophecy. So please don't accuse me of uh, having no, something no. dodgy off the internet. I've got the book. Here's page 65 of the book Prophecy. Um, I've scanned it into my computer, so I'm just loading it up. But I have an original copy of the book published in 1929. And on page 65, when my very slow computer starts up it says quote the scriptural proof is that the second presence of the lord jesus christ began in 1874 ad okay um, now. and there is watchtower literature i cannot from memory um remember the details but there is watchtower literature that explains you used to teach the second presence of christ was 1874 and Christ became king in 1878, and that eventually, years later, was changed to 1914. What's your background, Robert? I used to be an evangelical Christian. 
I now right. no longer have any involvement in any religious group. I just talk yeah. to different religious people. I find that's how you learn. You're not yeah. going to learn by going to a religious meeting and banging a tambourine for two hours or singing no. the glory songs or listening to or watching somebody do bells and smells mm -hmm. or wearing suits and ties and using the word Jehovah. It, it, you don't learn anything in religious meetings on the whole. Um, I'm not saying that everyone who, who runs a religious meeting is lost or ignorant. I do believe there are some godly people, far better Christians than me, um, but there seem to be precious few of them. And most religion, most religion doesn't seem to benefit people at all. But we're, 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 we're drifting. Could you, could you respond to the fact that the Watchtower supported the American military in the First World War? Well, to be honest with you, at the moment, I can't because I need to see that in context. And at this moment, I haven't quite access as you can You've You've access. got the access. reference to the what you've got. I've given you the references to the Watchtower. You can do that. Yeah, what well, say that again? Watch Zion's Watchtower, yeah. 15th of May, 1918. Yeah. Page 6,257 of the green reprints. And I bought the green reprints off a book dealer. They cost me a fortune. Mm -hmm. uh, I bought two sets many years ago. And one of them was stolen uh, by a so-called uh, Christian. <laughs> I got them shipped up to him. And uh, he was going to put the money in my bank account and he decided not to and he said if you want these back come up to Hull and collect them I live in Devon I'll do you right. yeah so that was that that was that was the end of that um if, if you live in Devon how did you get the Gray's phone number from the jw.org website it, it's it's difficult to contact any Kingdom Hall down here in Devon they they don't seem really? to answer the phone no. so um Another example of Jehovah's Witnesses' involvement in warfare would be the situation in Australia during the Second World War. Now, I don't have a copy of this Watchtower. I downloaded the PDFs for the whole of the Watchtower from 1947. Right. In the Watchtower for the 1st of June 1947, page 173, it talks about the situation in Australia during the Second World War, which had, of course had finished two years previously. And in Australia, they were fighting the Japanese. And it talks about young people who went for Bethel service were sent to work in military bases in the canteens to free up soldiers. And it also said that, quote, that young people who went for Bethel service were, quote, working in machine shops producing instruments of war it doesn't explain that in the watchtower and the watchtower does admit that mistakes were made in australia during the second world war so it is a rare admittance that some mistakes but they don't come completely clean they didn't name the company that jehovah's witnesses would was sent to work for it was called the taylor craft aircraft corporation they just call it working in machine shops producing instruments of war now that was Taylor Craft, owned by a very wealthy Jehovah's Witness. Taylor Craft made aircraft, and during the Second World War, uh, Mr. Taylor, a Jehovah's Witness, was making military aircraft for the Australian Royal Air, Air, Air Force. And his factory, he not only employed many Jehovah's Witnesses, being a Jehovah's Witness himself, but young people who went for Bethel service were sent directly to Taylor Craft as part of their Bethel service to make military aircraft for the Australian military during the Second World War. So the context is in that 1947 watchtower is only Australia, but that's an example of Australian Jehovah's Witnesses supporting the military in the Second World War. I'm going to, I'm on a bit of a time constraint at the moment. I'm going to have to make a move in a moment. Okay, um, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be quick. Um, there yeah. was a woman who died in 1945 called Henrietta M. Riley. This is current. This is today. Mm -hmm. She was very wealthy. She bequeathed all her assets to be turned into shares. Mm -hmm. And a, a trust was formed. It's autonomous. It's self-owning. So it's not owned by the Watchtower. 
but the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York is the sole beneficiary of the trust. It's called the Henrietta M. Riley Trust. You can find out about it from the IRS tax records. Yeah. And they have shares in a portfolio of companies. It's run by a Detroit bank for a fee. They have to produce annual accounts by law for the American Tax Authority. So that's how you can find that this is a legitimate trust. Yeah. And some of the share investment, which they have to, by law, give so they can tell the tax authorities where their income is coming from. Some of the income is from um, arms companies such as Northrop Grumman, which makes the B-2 bomber, Honeywell right. and Boeing. So today, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York gets share dividends, some of which is from arms companies through the Henrietta M. Riley Trust. Okay. So Watchtower is involved in warfare today. Right, that's your view. Yeah. Yeah. They, were, okay. they were given over 5 million shares in the Rancam Engine Corporation by James McCann. I haven't traced what happened to those shares. So they might have sold them, they might have kept them, I don't know. And I don't know which of the two Watchtower Corporations, New York or Pennsylvania, accepted over 5 million shares in Rancam Engine Corporation. But Rancam make engines for military drones. So when they're dropping bombs on the Middle East and killing people, the engines that power some of those drones are Rancam engines made of ceramic parts so they can get very hot and because it's got ceramics in unlike metal which bends and weakens ceramics uh, don't um jehovah's witnesses accepted over five million shares in the ran cam engine corporation right yeah they're not um, neutral the, the watchtower has been involved with the united nations they joined the united nations in 1992 You look, you look shocked. We're not involved in the United Nations, definitely not. Absolutely no way. Um, the the Watchtower... Lloyd, Lloyd Barry, who was your then governing body member, signed you into UN membership in 1992. He applied in 1991. You were granted NGO status as an associate of the United Nations in 1992. This was exposed in the Guardian newspaper of the 8th of October 2001, the first of three articles, The Guardian called you hypocrites. It said the Watchtower was an organization of hypocrites because it, it mentioned that you taught that the UN was of the devil, one of the satanic beasts of the Book of Revelation, yet you joined the United Nations in 1992. Now, The Guardian produced three articles making this claim. You've never sued The Guardian. You've never taken them to court for libel or slander. And the UN was inundated with thousands and thousands of letters. I mean thousands of letters from Jehovah's Witnesses, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses and Christians from all over the world saying, is it true that the Jehovah's Witnesses were members of the United Nations? And so the head of the NGO section, which the Watchtower joined, wrote a to whom it may concern letter. I have a copy of that on the 11th of October 2001. I'll read it to you if you want me to read it to you. It basically says the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York joined in 1992. You applied for membership in 1991. You were granted NGO status as an associate of the United Nations in 1992. And you left, you applied to leave and you were granted disassociation the day after the Guardian article on the 9th of October 2001. The letter was signed by Paul Hoffiel section leader of the NGO of the United Nations. He signed it on UN headed paper and you've never taken Paul Hoffiel or the United Nations to court for slander or libel. You've never taken the Guardian newspaper to court for libel or slander. And believe me, this is just the start. There's a, a tsunami of evidence of Jehovah's Witnesses involvement with the American government, with OSCE, which is a political group here in Europe, and with other political groups and even individual Jehovah's Witnesses um, involvement with the United Nations, with the full complicity of the Bethel headquarters. Um, there was a um, there was a professor at East Anglia University called Michael Stocking. He was a professor of earth sciences at the University of East Anglia, and he was a Jehovah's Witness elder in Norwich. He died a few years ago. He died in 
2018. I've got the obituary in the uh, one of the Norwich newspapers that his uh, he died and the funeral service was being held at a local Kingdom Hall. It was held at a local Kingdom Hall because he was a practicing Jehovah's Witness elder. He might even have been on the hospital liaison committee. I'm not too sure about that. Um, I've contacted Jehovah's Witnesses in Norwich, but they all claim that they don't know him. And he did die four years ago. Now, Michael Stocking was involved with the United Nations. As a professor, he taught at the United Nations University and he was involved on various UN committees and he even flew to New York to give a talk to sorry to give a talk in 2007 at the UN headquarters when um, somebody who I've come across who told me about Mr Stocking who was a practicing Jehovah witness pointed out that Michael Stocking Professor Michael Stocking was involved with the United Nations then this person who pointed out a fact that Michael Stocking was a Jehovah's Witness elder involved with the United Nations. Um, he was told to be quiet, leave it in Jehovah's hands, and eventually he was disfellowshipped. They just got, got rid of him and they kept Michael Stocking. So the Watchtower is involved and has been involved for a hundred years in politics and warfare. It's exactly the same as all the other religions. It's a money-making business. And their money-making model is to get people like you to believe that you must work very hard for hours after hour after hour, unpaid. You must wear a suit and tie so you look respectable and do all this unpaid work in order to earn, basically, salvation. Because in Jehovah's Witness theology, people like you, the great crowd, have no covenant with God. Only the anointed Jehovah's Witnesses have a covenant with Jehovah God in Jehovah's Witness theology. That's worldwide security under the Prince of Peace at the bottom of page 10. It says you do not have Christ as your mediator. So if you don't have Christ as your mediator and you have no covenant with God, your only chance of salvation is to be very loyal to the coming government. And the coming government, right, would be... Um, the coming government would be run by the anointed Jehovah's Witnesses, which would include your governing body. So that explains the fanatical loyalty of Jehovah's Witnesses to the governing body. You have no basis for salvation, so you just put all your trust. It's like a limpet, yeah? A limpet's just a weak little, a little animal, a weak little creature, but it sticks to a rock on the beach very, very firmly. And that's how Jehovah's Witnesses, who are part of the great crowd, see themselves. They see the anointed Jehovah's Witnesses like a great rock. And they see themselves like little limpets and they stick to it. And that is the basis of their salvation. It really is very strange. It's kind of salvation by government. They, they believe that being associated with the coming government, they can somehow attain salvation. How? It's never clearly explained through their association with the coming government. Well, as I say, Rob, I'm, I'm constrained by time. Yeah, sure. Um, I really appreciate you know our conversation. To be honest with you, um, in view of your recent comments, I'm, I'm not really sure there's it's worth continuing the conversation um, because clearly your understanding or, or your your view of of Jehovah's Witnesses is not. Um, I'll put this politely um you believe that we're hypocrites is, is that um no i no i said that the i said that the guardian newspaper accused you of hypocrites okay, and fine. you never sued okay, them you fine. never took them to court no, Jehovah's... Right. But the, fact, the fact that we never responded or that means nothing actually um because there are plenty of people who have accusations made against them who never sued uh, but that's beside the point. Uh, Jehovah's um, Witnesses sue everyone that moves. I was taken to court last year by Jehovah's Witnesses. Right. Two Jehovah's Witnesses, one in Launceston and one in Tiverton, complained to the police about me. I went to court and at pre-trial it was thrown out of court um, on the 13th of August 2021, I believe, at Plymouth 
Crown Court. Like I say, I, I think in, in view of your comments and mm. uh, that you've made, I, I don't really think there's particularly much point in having a further well, conversation. Well, that's a little bit rich. Jehovah's Witnesses say that and every I, single organisation and individual that's not a Jehovah's Witness is of the devil. Jehovah's Witnesses demonise every government on earth every other religion other than themselves and individuals like me who are not baptized jehovah's witnesses you claim that i'm going to be destroyed as an enemy of jehovah at armageddon now you're entitled to those beliefs but please don't play the victim because you're the one it's jehovah's witnesses who demonize everyone else on earth and i have a right to say okay i'm going to investigate this this belief because i love jehovah god and i want to serve jehovah god and i don't believe the bible says that I have to associate with a religion such as the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, which is so heavily involved in politics and warfare. Okay, that's fine. I, I, I mean, I mean something, else, something else for you to check up would be the current Watchtower membership of OSCE. OSCE stands for Secu the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. It's a political organization it was founded in the 1970s with the best of intentions to promote peace. It's moved in the direction of political correctness. And I have dozens. We'd be here for hours if I went through all of them. But, but OS, OSCE runs meetings for politicians. It's basically a movement of European politicians. But there are hangers on who also attend. All right. Now, this is a political meeting, OSCE. Uh, in Cordoba in Spain... On the 8th and 9th of June 2005, there was an, there was an OSC conference on anti-Semitism and on other forms of intolerance. And you can check it up. Gregory Allen of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania took part in that political meeting. And also Paul Gillies and Marcel Gillett of the European Association of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses also took part. That organization is now called the European Association of Jehovah's Witnesses. They've dropped the word Christian. And if you phone the Chelmsford, uh, is that where your head office now is? Your £150 million pound head yeah, office? Yeah. There's a branch office in Chelmsford, yeah. Chelmsford. Well, if you phone the Chelmsford head office and ask to be put through to the European Association of Jehovah's Witnesses, you will be put through to the service desk. That's, that's what happened to me when I rang the European Association of Jehovah's Witnesses number I was put through to the service desk for the, for the south of England. Now, you have three Jehovah's Witnesses attending an OSCE political meeting. And there are dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of OSCE political meetings that are regularly attended by not just Jehovah's Witnesses, but Scientology and various Jewish groups ultra-Orthodox Jewish groups, because what they're trying to do is to increase the hate crime laws in Europe to say that if you disagree with our religion, you will go to prison for committing a hate crime. So Scientology are trying to say, look, we can preach our Scientology religion. And Jehovah's Witnesses are saying the same. We can also have our carts out on the street and we can preach what we like. But if people come up to us and disagree with us, we want to see those people imprisoned for committing a hate crime. We don't mind if pig ignorant people come up to us because we can deal with them. But we don't want educated people to come up to us and try and talk to us about our religion. Especially people who know more about our religion than we do. We want these people imprisoned. And so that's one of the reasons amongst several why Jehovah's Witnesses and Scientology and ultra-Orthodox religious groups, uh, Jewish religious groups, are involving themselves with OSCE and I could go on to the American government because Jehovah's Witnesses are connected to the American government as well attending um, various um, uh, branches of the American government and what they're trying to do continually is to expand the hate crime laws so that people cannot disagree with Jehovah's Witnesses in public. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to have to go. All right. Uh, at the time, yeah. But like I say, th uh, thanks, thanks to, for making contact. I'm glad we've had a conversation. Uh, clearly, we're not going to agree, which I well, don't have you, a problem. You, you haven't responded to anything. No, uh, <laughs> Every well, single yeah. thing I've raised, you've 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 yeah. you've ignored. Okay, that's fine. All right then. And 
and uh, you have a good day. All I right? do put these conversations on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.